Hello, this is Adam Fantushev. In this video, I'm going to show you the Agents Hero promotion. So let me set up quickly this uh, character. Let's create an agent type. Let's save this one. Uh, let's create some agents in the scene. Let's add a grid layout to our agent group actor. And let's select my Twin Blaster and let's add a simple animation reader and then let me take the idle clip um, idle, idle relax let's change the direction and let's create some agents okay this is a normal agent group um, as you can see, it's using a single schedule mesh instance and components. So every agent is using instancing on the GPU. Um, this one is powerful if you have a lot of agents, but doesn't support a couple of features. The one of those features are uh, morph targets that's not supported on normal agents. Also ray tracing. These those agents. Uh, draw with uh, this component are not visible to the ray tracing pass. So, if you want to use ray tracing of targets, you, you have uh, uh, you have stuff that you can do in able to uh, make some agent visible to 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 the ray tracing pass, so you can see them of targets. This is called uh, agent hero promotion. So, what this means? Let's have a look to the parameter on the agent group. Uh, so in the from the version 1.7 of Atom Surreal, you will see these new pro in, these new properties that you can use. So uh, the first one will show you the promoter agent to hero. So if I turn off this uh, this option, and I check uh, on the agent group what's happening. You see that now uh, there are multiple actor components. As you can see, basically there is one for every agent. Those components are uh, possible mesh components. So they are components that inherit from the skin in, skin in mesh component. So this means basically that every agent using a single component is similar to the skeletal mesh. So in this way, uh, this component is visible to, re to the ray tracing. Also, it supports also the morph target. So now basically all the agents are, um, are are basically using a different different component to draw. Uh, so that option is to is used to promote all the agents. But if you don't want to promote to all the agents, you can, for example, promote so only some agents passing uh, the group ID of the agents that you want to promote. So if I now check, you see that only those agents are are actually using this uh, the, the, this component. As you can see it's there, the agent there. Okay, let me uh, show you another way to promote agents. Uh, so when you use the promote all the agents or uh, or the agents here or list here. Uh, those agents are promoted and for the rest of the simulation will be hero. A lot of the time you want to uh, dynamically switch an agent to a hero and then bring back the hero to, to an agent. You can do that using a metadata. So let's uh, now I clean up the hero, let's add a metadata. Okay, let's call this, uh, for example, uh, my hero the type lift bool and if i turn on this one so now all the agent has this metadata and the value is one i can go here to the promote a the promote agent hero metadata i can pass the metadata name now basically all the agents uh, are promoted because agent group check this metadata if it's true or one then it's from promote agents. 
So now I have all the agent promoter. So it's not so different from, from before. But let's make the simulation more interesting. Uh, let's go to the add metadata. Let's remove this one. And let me turn off the agent creation only. This is means that this metadata is set to force only when the agent is created. So we can manipulate this metadata with some other, so the, some other components. Um, so you can, for example, um, change at the runtime this metadata with Blueprint if you want to promote some agents and then bring the agents back. Um, so, I mean, it's really, uh, it's really up to you what you want to control. But let me show you one of the new uh, behavior components that we added that could be really useful for this case. And that is the first and trig trigger behavior. So the first and trigger behavior is similar to the area trigger. So it can basically manipulate uh, a change of metadata when the agents are inside the first room and I, they are basically between the near and the far plane that you can set up here. So let me change the metadata name, in this case it's my hero. And let's change the far plane to something like 500. So the agent when see the two 500 uh, from the player will be promoted to my hero. Uh, let's remove the keep, the keep value in this way. Uh, the, the agent doesn't record keep the hero state when they go outside the first room. Um, so let's have, let's press play. So let's have a look. Okay, it's not using, no, there is no agent that is hero because, let me switch off, because we need to set the right bool value on the first and trigger. So let's turn on the bool value. So in this way, it will set to one. Let's press play again. Let's put in pause. And now we have some agents. Uh, at the moment, basically the agents are really close to the to the to the pawn. So basically, are promoting everything. But if I go, for example, here, let's have a look. No, no. No, the, there is no hero agents. Uh, let's move a bit, probably here. Yeah, we have some uh, uh, six of five uh, agents that, that are hero. In this way, it's really easy to promote agents dynam dynamically. For example, especially if you're using ray tracing, uh, because having ray tracing all the agents is really expensive. So if you have thousand agents, you could probably fill up the entire memory of your GPU. But in this way, you can promote all the agents are really near to the player and the agent that you want basically the best quality and, and you want basically using ray tracing of more or more targets on them. Uh, okay, now uh, let's have a look what, what happens when you use uh, per instance metadata on the material. So on the normal agents, you can use uh, per instance metadata to pass metadata to the material. Uh, so let me go to the material of the team buster. And it's not, sorry, not here. Let's go here and for example, let's change the, the, the metallic color of this shader. So now basically using a, a red color for the arm, but we can use a metadata to dry this one. So let's create a particle color. Uh, let's connect this one. Let's save. Okay, let's Let's wait a bit, that is saving the material. Just a second. Okay, so now let's create a custom color on the agents. Uh, so let's add, add this metadata. Let's call my 
my color be a vector and let's let's keep red and now I need to promote my agent sorry my uh, metadata let's go here and set nice red again uh, please remember to uh, turn on this one in this way uh, every tick the agent group will send the, the metadata. Okay, so let's have a look what what with the euro. As you can see now, I have some some agents that are here that are basically no color in the material. And if I switch back, basically when they switch to the normal agent, we get the the right color. So we need to fix the material for the hero agents. How can how we can do that. So let's go to the material. Uh, so to fix that you need to add a couple of nodes here. Uh, one is the uh, scalar parameter and call is this hero. So this parameter basically well, um, when the AJ group uh, promote an agent and and basically create an instance of each materials if you are using per instance metadata and this pass a float value to this parameter that if it's a hero it will pass a value of one to this to this node if a normal agent will just pass to I mean, it just use the default value in this case it's zero then we need another parameter in this case a vector uh, parameter vector meter and this parameter must have the same name of the of the metadata in this case will be my uh, my color because for hero agents instead to passing the uh, the color to the particle color node or the dynamic property if you have multiple metadata it will pass to it will search for uh, for parameter node with the same name of the metadata and it's passing that the value of the metadata there. So uh, if we now create a linear interpolate node, we can interpolate this uh, uh, this color in a way that when there is the hero, it just take the my color. One is a normal agent using the particle color, so it. I switch and I save now. Just a second, that is compiling and saving. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's play a simulation, and yeah, now it's working. So I am passing the right color to the hero and also to the normal agents. Okay, uh, now for, for, for the ray tracing, if you want to really use the ray tracing, it's really simple. Uh, you just need to go on the agent group, search for the ray tracing, and you just need to turn on the visible ray tracing. If you turn on this option, then this option is passed to the uh, possible mesh component of the hero agents, and then basically the hero agent will be visible to the ray tracing. It will be affected by shadows, lights, and all the other ray tracing, ray tracing effects. Okay, so now let's have a look to the morph targets. So for the morph targets, um, let's have, let's have a look to this uh, to this character. And I have several morph targets here. Um, have this one. This other one here that we could use. Uh, so the easiest way to use morph targets is like uh, the normal Unreal workflow. So you can have on the animation. Uh, so let's let's have a look to the our. Um, sorry, let's have a look to the, our idle clip. So the idle clip uh, has already a curve that's controlling the, uh, the blank shape. So for example, let's put uh, some keyframe. 
put a keyframe here, add, add another keyframe here, and put it to zero. Uh, we just need to save this one. And then basically you don't need to do anything else. Uh, that uh, that move targets weight is passed uh, to the possible mesh component, and then you would be able to see that one. So let's look. Yeah, probably let's change the time. Ah, yeah, sorry. Let's put uh, another keyframe. Let's put another keyframe here. Another here. Another here. Another here. Another here. Sorry, here, another keyframe. Okay, so we have some more, more variation here. Let's save, let's play. As you can see, it's, around, it's automatically transferred to the, to the year agents. So this is a, a way to control the morph targets using uh, clips, but you can control the morph targets uh, directly uh, with a metadata. Instead, you set the weights on the on the clip. Uh, so for example, we can add, uh, let's have a look to the other, to the other um, morph targets. For example, uh, let's have a look which one we can use at base. Yeah, you can. We can use this one, for example. Uh, so let's copy this name. And now let's add a, um, a metadata. So this metadata. Uh, set to bool, bool just only to double, then this metadata must have a specific name. Uh, so this name must, have the, must be the agent type plus an underscore and, and then plus the, the name of the morph target. So in this case, I have the agent type name that is twin blast. So it would be my twin blast. Then underscore score and then the name of the morph. Okay, and now if I um, set this one to one, and if I press play, let's see, probably. We can just check here. Uh, let me promote all agents. This is the way I can see here. Oh, sorry, not this one. Yeah, as you can see, it's there. So if I change, for example, the metadata and to, to minus one, it's there, it's zero. Obviously, you can control this value in Blueprint uh, or with uh, C++ logic or with other um, behavior component and control metadata. Um, so, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.